Exciting times today, folks. Welcome back to Decimal Tense. My name's Nick, and today we're fitting the 18T stroker motor into the speeding tube T4 van. <laughs> So the really cool thing about this as well is that we get to fit the speed into T4 conversion kit that Tom's developed with a lot of top companies. He's done a really good job and allows the 18T with the O2M gearbox to go straight into the T4. I mean obviously custom gearbox brackets, stabiliser bracket down here as well as a really nifty uh, engine mount bracket here which includes like a captive plate to go underneath. So that's really good because it uses the strength from the chassis leg to support the engine, just like it is in the car, really, a bit of a pendulum setup. Uh, and obviously, I mean, this one is like full on 500 brake race van, but this kit allows this engine to go into this van, even in standard form. And it does it by using all of these little fancy trick bits. So you've got a custom billet adapter ring to go between the engine and the gearbox. Now you can't fit it without that, that, that adapter ring, but it doesn't allow the, you know, the ideal placement of the gearbox for the, the diff and the, the way that the drive shafts go. So the, the adapter ring is, is pretty essential. Uh, also, uh, in keeping with the way that the engine has to be mounted is this funky little machined adapter uh, spacer for the oil pickup. And that just allows, uh, when the engine gets canted forward, it allows the oil pickup to be uh, exactly parallel to the ground where it should be to pick up the oil perfectly. The kit also comes with a one-piece billet flywheel, which is really cool, so you don't have to use any spacers, longer bolts, anything like that. You can use the OEM bolts. The spacers have a bad rep for a reason, for safety, so it just makes sense, this and that. I really like that. And for all that kit allows the AD&T and the PD conversion in the T4, obviously, it's not good enough for Tom. He's went full fat here. Uh, this is his 18T, well, it's not actually an 18T now, it's a two liter turbo stroker motor, so board out, stroker crankshaft, cat cams, it's pretty good and we put this together, there's a bit of a story behind this obviously, so if you're interested in that, we'll leave a link at the end uh, to the strip down, the build, all the rest of it. This should be about 500 brake horsepower and we're going to have it on our dyno as well. But there's no time at the present, we've got the engine ready, we've got the mounts ready, we've got the box ready, let's chuck it in. Right, so just about to put the uh, gearbox in, we're going to get everything mounted up shortly on the engine here. Original chassis mount point. I've also used the original dog bone mount point. Got a crush tube, so that comes with bushes, so it goes straight on. And on this side, rather than, you know, as many people do, you know, welding onto the side of the chassis here and relying on a welded joint or a, or a bolt, um, sometimes, you know, some people are using the mount up here as well, which is good. But for this setup, I wanted to make sure I get a good distribution of weight across the mount. This setup was actually designed with Auto Style down the road from me. You know, we worked on this last year, and Ant is absolute genius when it comes to this kind of stuff. He's measured it all out, so we're going to be able to replicate this all pretty easily. On this side, the way that it mounts, it's very straightforward. You've got to drill three holes. That's it. Okay, now of course, you've got your original mounting point here spot welded in so you can just drill it out and take out this part here you know sell it if you want to to someone who's just rusted out so if you come in closer the kit will come with this little spacer here the reason we need this is to clear this notch on the chassis rail here it also acts as a good template because once you pop that down there you can feel it settles into a position mark your holes through there once you've done that you'll then obviously have your two marks there and this is the captive plate. Rather than just putting your bolts through the top of a chassis rail and putting nuts underneath, Ant actually devised a captive plate that goes in underneath here. You hold it in with the bolts provided and that gives you your points. So it enables you to have a really firm and secure mount on the chassis rail. This here is a Mark IV mount. Mine is a Vibrotechnics one, which I got from Darkside Developments. Um, but many people will just use a standard Mark IV mount. Pop it on the top, that's in the right spot and then put your bolt through, just pop it into there and then wind her up. That now, absolutely solid. That's not going anywhere. Just, just the fact that all I've got to do is turn my wrist and mm -hmm. that's just like perfect. This is the old oil pickup that I had on the old engine. What most people do on their 20 valve is they'll cut it and then rotate it to get it in the right spot. Rather than having to cut pickups and mess around, I decided it'd be far better to bin off this piece 
and actually make a small adapter. This is what SWR were going to knock up originally. There was another chap on the T420 page actually did his own version, which was a round uh, circle. He's decided that he's not doing that anymore and said, look, crack on. And um, I've had these made up now. This design uses a rubber seal round here and uh, SWR have knocked this up. The same guys that did the adapter plate. Right, we've got an AGU windage tray. Special one, aren't they, these ones? Yep, very special. Forged from... Forged... Forged from factory. We've thrown the old one away with the bearing failure. You'll end up with some metal everywhere on the returns. Okay, so now we just want to torque these up to 15 newton meters. Everything is just the original torque settings. Now, as far as the engine's concerned, the ground is that way. So now with the adapter, we can rotate this right the way around and get it where it should be. And we're now going to get a nice draw and we're also raising the cavitation level. Really happy with that. Cool, nice how it fits perfectly with the windows. Yeah. You know, little things like this, you know, the all pickup adapter, figuring out all the shafts and getting all the measurements right they're the things that take the time it's always worth putting some fresh boots on just because if they crack it fail your mot or it's a, it's a warning or is it a failure i think it's a fail isn't it yeah yeah I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, so it's always worthwhile just putting a fresh boot on there when you can one good thing to do on your t4 even if you haven't got one that's engine swapped a bit more of a preemptive measure really the clutch bracket spot welds tend to snap okay now if you look under here i've lit the area so you can see it well you've got um a couple of little bolts here and a bracket. Now this thing here tends to break and you end up with your basically no clutch pedal. Obviously your uprated pressure plate is going to take more force. The harder that is, the more force you're going to have to put through the clutch pedal. It's just a cheap reinforcement bracket off eBay and it's, a, it's so easy to fit. I'm going to whip that through. But this is the other side of that bolt here. You can see it coming through here. I've taken the two bolts out of here. I can move it around and I'm going to put that around there and then put the bolt through. That one's now on. The top one. There you go, guys. I think they're only about seven or eight quid, but if it saves you being broken down at the side of the road, it's well worth putting on there. Especially, you know, if you are putting an uprated clutch in with a bigger pressure plate, it's very easy to start snapping these spot welds on the back here. Right, guys, we've just run into a bit of a short term issue. The USB plug on the ECU, I don't know if you can see down there, we've had to take the covers off. The socket on the ECU actually got pretty knackered. There you go. So, Nick's labelled all of the uh, wires. We just did a continuity test, didn't we, yesterday and labelled them out and he's wired it direct into the board on there and now for the moment of truth i said the moment of truth but obviously we've tested this first haven't we yeah <laughs> don't tell them that yeah much, <laughs> but it's uh, real nick's also wired in my switch i mean this is are you ready for race van level 500 ready <laughs> Boom. There you go, Nick. Congratulations. Teamwork. That's it. Makes the dream work, man. There we go. Perfect. So that's good. So that's guys everything's in quick talking point on the transverse bracket normally up here you'd have your alternator you'd have your aircon pump here and you also have your power steering one at the bottom now in a car that sits level okay so there's no problems there but obviously in the t4 with it tilted forward it does sit quite low this is what i've been running so far this is just an alternator part of the bracket many people cut them up there as you can see they're modified now what a lot of people do is they'll chop the bracket here across there and there and they'll put the lower half of an a4 t longitudinal mount which is where the engine sits like that in the car going to the back wheels that way but it still sits out quite far and I wanted to make sure that I get as much ground clearance as possible so what I've actually done is I've had this CAD scanned and moved up here with a bracket so it gives me as much ground clearance as possible and it just means that you're not going to have that sat down low like that I'm going to cut along this line here and then just neaten it up again as always I've got to test these things first you know I get so many messages from people saying oh is this ready can I have it now can I have it now I want to test everything first because I don't want to you know give something to someone that I'm not happy with 100% here you go Spencer just doing the bolts up you can see here the bottom of that bracket's been chopped off and now the power steering pump will just sit in there you can see here the revised breather system i've done with the port coming straight off the top of the cam cover this now feeds of course straight into the catch can like before and also one coming off the top there 
um, you can actually get a nice brass breather for the top of the oil filter housing from Cloud9 Customs. That's a really cool bit of kit. And uh, in fact, we've got quite a few things from Billy Cloud on this build. He's been good as gold, you know, supplying bits and pieces. Check out the website, it's well worth having a look. We're about to get the front on now. Spence and I are going to lift her up and put her on. There you go, guys, front's on. Just going to connect up the coolant system now and uh, get everything plugged in. I'm not putting the core packs on yet because we're going to take the plugs out, turn the engine over, get the oil to circulate. And Colin's coming over with the goodies. Oh, well, you got your no chance of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, easy, oh, mate. Premature elimination. <laughs> Lovely. Right, well, just topping up the O2M. You do put it up. Colin's done this before. And there she goes. So even just turning over, it's making about what, 55 psi? Yeah, yeah. But isn't it the... Cool, we'll give it a break now, just let everything settle. We'll whack the fuses for the fuel pumps back in now, put the spark plugs in, give it a minute or two to just settle down, and um, hopefully then fire up shortly, which I cannot wait for, I'm buzzing now. Oh, it's gonna be I'm fun, isn't it? So is everybody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything is connected, the fuses are in. You're excited. I, I, these, guy, these guys, these oh, guys have no idea how loud the van is yet, and how stupid that exhaust is. Um, so yeah, this moment here, we're just going to start it up for about 15, 20 seconds. Just make sure there are no leaks. Give it a bit of um, cylinder pressure with a bit of a couple of revs, and um, then we're going to leave it for tonight. And then we're going to go straight into mapping tomorrow. Um, you know, when you start mapping a car on a fresh motor, it's really important you bed the rings in. To, you know, very light load, just uh, building some cylinder pressure. So right, guys. Here we go. You go. This is the moment of truth. Don't show them the uh, initiation. Yes. Process. Okay. That's all connected. Yeah, very happy. No leaks or anything, is it? It's all set. Good. So I think she just wants a full charge now. Full charge and then hit it tomorrow. Right, next step before we put it on the dyno, we're going to have to do the trapping on Tom's van because we had a look and the wheels just didn't look right. And Tom did mention that he hasn't had it done before. Uh, and we're, so we've just hooked up the Kogi uh, system and it turns out he's got about 8 uh, mil of twin on the front. Uh, which will just mean that the van actually wants to wander on the rollers when it's on there. So first thing is we'll get the tracking done, just so that, you know, we're ready, we're done, we've smashed it. Makes sense. Taste over you, Ben. Right, so we started off with about 8mm positive toe on the front there, and we've ended up with plus 1.2 or well, plus 1.5 so it's within range it's in green so really happy with that now that means on the dyno it'll be nice and true so it's uh it's getting closer tom it's getting closer i oh, know we're not far off now are we <laughs> <laughs> it even looks straighter now the wheels are pointing in the right direction 